Hi guys, it is just another yuck, gray, depressing Monday morning here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas here on this gloomy Monday morning, April 2nd, 2018. So uh, as hard as I tried to uh, get my weekly economic meltdown roundup rant, uh, into one rant. I just couldn't do it. So uh, this is part two and final part of this week's economic meltdown roundup rant where I simply open up the mainstream media's main headlines and business pages to see how the new world order, the global industrial economy, taking down this planet. So uh, as I usually do, we're going to uh, dedicate at least this part of the rant to our friends in the various energy markets uh, oil, gas, coal, <clears throat> and I think we're going to talk about some wind energy today. And so, guys, I think I've had enough rants for a while about the U.S. shale uh, oil stuff. It's the same stories week after week after week. We are fucked. Here in this country with the shale oil, so uh, I'm not going to bore you again with that broken record rant that just sounds like the same rant every week. So let's just step out of our own country and uh, see what's up on the minds of the planet eaters. Celebrating the day pretty much everywhere we go, we have the, uh, <coughs> the planet eaters clinking their champagne glasses. This is pretty much, we're going to start off pretty much just all over Latin America. From Mexico to Tierra del Fuego. Latin America holding record number of oil auctions this year. Oh shit, Sherlock. Latin America in 2018 will hold the most oil drilling licensing rounds in its history, opening about 1,100 oil and gas, oil and gas drilling blocks for foreign capital. What what they're saying is all over Latin America that uh, more and more they're opening up. Uh, their oil drilling business to the to these giant uh, multinational oil companies, you know Exxon and all the all the big players. Uh, Mexico started the calendar in January with a round that attracted 93 billion dollars in investment pledges. And another eight billion dollars since then. Uh, Brazil uh, is up to over thirty-two billion dollars in the last few months. I uh, hope this storm blowing in. I hope the wind isn't too bad on this damn microphone. You know, I'm sitting here in the barn trying to stay out of this wind. Uh, anyway, let's zero in on just one of these, and um, and you, you could do this how many hundreds of times? This is just one look. We're going to go down there to Brazil, and more than in the Amazon, uh, where there's also oil exploration, the big push in, in Brazil is actually offshore. You know, for all the future uh, oil spill disasters. Uh, looming uh, in Brazil that we can look forward to how the uh, eastern coast of South America uh, will soon be slathered in oil spills. Okay. Exxon Mobil wins eight new drilling block leases fortifying its presence in Brazil. Oh, shit. Exxon Mobil Corporation won eight additional exploration blocks during Brazil's 15th bid round. The oil major 
will operate six of the newly awarded blocks. Huh. With the latest awards, Exxon Mobil raised its holdings in Brazil's, they're talking about offshore oil fields, by about 640,000 acres. Uh, the company, with, with this, this latest uh, purchases, became one of the largest acreage holders among international players in Brazil, now holding more than two million acres. No shit, Sherlock. As uh, these offshore oil fields uh, getting ready to explode uh, down there, getting ready to explode in more ways than one, and as long as we are looking at oil drilling, how about natural gas? As Brazil's uh, oil and gas company Petrobras signs $590 million deal to set up natural gas unit. Petrobras has, has inked a $590 million to construct a natural gas processing unit in Rio de Janeiro. The company has signed the contract with a consortium including China's, China's Shandong Kurui Petroleum. Do you think so? Notably, the new unit is likely to be the largest in the country with processing capacity up to 21 million cubic meters per day. There you go. Alright. Uh, let's see. Let's move out of Brazil and Latin America. Let's go over there just to the old time players. Over there, over there, just in the Middle East. Wow. Bahrain. Bahrain makes largest oil discovery in its history. No shit, Sherlock. Bahrain on Sunday, yesterday, announced it has discovered the single largest oil and gas field in the history of the small kingdom. No shit, Sherlock. This is uh, the country's higher committee for natural resources chaired by Crown Prince Salman bin Hamid. Quote, this new resource is forecast to contain highly significant quantities of tight, light crude oil and deep gas, dwarfing Bahrain's current reserves. There you go. Uh, let's see. The kingdom raises about 80% of its revenues from oil drilling. Okay, from Bahrain to somewhere offshore Indonesia. Well, at least two people died in a fire as Indonesian authorities tried to clean up an oil spill off the coast of Borneo on Saturday. The blaze was sparked as workers tried to clean the spill in the water by burning it. Two people believed to be fishermen were caught in the fire and died. Good God. Uh, authorities have managed to put out the fire they were they set to try to clean up the oil spill, but there was still an oil spill in the 
water. It was not known how much oil was spilled or where the oil spill came from. Oh, shit, yes. Uh, and then I love this. A boat carrying coal was temporarily stuck near the fire. There you go. Boat accidents are common in Indonesia, but oil spill cleanup accidents are rare. Okay, from oil spills off the coast of Borneo, let's go look at coal in India. Wow. Coal India's production and shipments rise to new record in March. Oh, shit, Coal India's sales and output in March rose to the highest on record as the world's single biggest coal miner rushed to meet its annual production targets. Output from the coal mine rose 9% from last year to 72.3 million tons of coal coming out of the ground last month, while shipments shipments rose 5.5% to over 55 million tons. Uh, not sure where they're shipping it to. I'm going to guess China. Uh, output for the year ended March at 567 million tons of coal. A new world record being set in 2018 for uh, anybody not understanding why this maybe you recall my climate change meltdown roundup rant from Wednesday we'll probably be talking about this more on Monday that India uh, which is under a severe water crisis already is facing perhaps the single hottest summer in its history already these devastating heat waves are are ramping up in india so guess what more and more indians uh, are doing they're buying more and more air conditioners to fight the, the heat wave from climate change and guess what that means boosting coal output is crucial for Coal India to meet rising demand from power plants, its biggest customers. An early onset of summer heat is expected to boost electricity consumption. To meet that, that demand, the miner is seeking more railway carriages and is also trying to ship the fuel through roads and I just mentioned in part one anybody failing to the uh, to do this that as part of this uh, the the railway system in India has 90,000 jobs to fill uh, as India you know to move all of this planet eating shit all around India and 25 million people applied for the 90,000 job openings in the Indian railway system last week. All right. Uh, let's see, but we're just going to wrap this up. Uh, see, we've talked about oil and gas and coal, so let us wind up in our own country. Uh, talking about that clean, 
green, renewable, sustainable uh, <clears throat> planet friendly energy known as wind energy. This is anybody who, who does not understand, not even talking about uh, all the shit, uh, the fossil fuels and the metals and all of this going into actually creating these goddamn giant wind farms out in the middle of nowhere. How do you think they get this fucking renewable energy to market? How about these giant, these humongous uh, power lines uh, as thousands of miles of these goddamn giant power lines which are filled with copper. We won't even get into a copper mining rant. And so this is just the latest chapter I've been touching on this one story for years. Let's just get the latest chapter on uh, the uh, infamous, uh, what do they call this fucking pipeline? The Grain Belt Express. Stymied by state regulators, a new, stymied by state regulators, a renewable energy company seeking to build one of our nation's longest power lines across a large swath of the Midwest has turned to a prominent politician in, a, in an attempt to revive its $2.3 billion project. Yes. Uh, and I'm not going to get into all of this. Let's just get some. What, what is this all about? Uh, so should they prevail in court, which they will, it could help clear a path for Houston-based Clean line, clean line energy partners <laughs> to build a 780 mile, otherwise known as 1255 kilometer, high voltage transmission line from the wind farms of western Kansas across Missouri and Illinois to Indiana where it would then feed into a power grid serving eastern states. Uh, Missouri had been the lone state uh, blocking the project. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The power line known as the Grain Belt Express has come to symbolize one of the largest challenges for renewable energy developers in the U.S. Although converting wind into electricity is increasingly affordable, it can be hard to get the regulatory and legal approval needed to transmit the wind power from remote areas where it is produced to the places where it is needed. Hmm, do you think so? I guess the Missouri Public Service Commission rejected the project after determining the power line had little benefit for Missouri consumers and citing the burden on landowners in its path not to mention uh, the burden on the land, uh, you know, uh, where every single tree, bush, pretty much, I guess they leave the grass and wildflowers underneath their power lines. How, how, how wide a swath are we talking about here? It doesn't say, I don't know, about maybe 500 feet wide swath where we have a scorched earth policy, this one power line, 770 miles 
of an absolute scorched earth policy so they can stretch hundreds of miles of copper transmission line coming from these goddamn copper mines all over the planet uh, so they can take their energy from these bird killing uh, planet eating windmills to send it to these clueless fucking moron consumers in the East while the United Nations and these little limp dick greeny mainstream environmentalists continue to claim that wind energy is going to save this planet. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. And anyway, we are going to wrap up part two of this week's economic meltdown roundup rant because the sun seems to be coming out and I've got to crank up my gas sucking lawnmower which is already having engine problems to mow my grass here in paradise in the end times so I'm doing my part to support the global industrial oil soaked economy for taking down my little part of the planet here in paradise in Garfield, Texas. Smoke them. If you got them, we are so fucked. Bye, guys.